Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive, this time around from the streets of Greenwich with this Renault Twizy. We absolutely love the Twizies. This is specifically the cargo version, which I will show you later on in the video. But today is a little bit of a challenge because the Twizy has a realistic range on a charge of about 40 miles. It is showing 29 miles at the moment. And the challenge is the fact that we need to deliver it to Cambridge. Now, normally any sane person would hire a trailer, get it onto a trailer and move it on like that. However, we like to do things a little bit differently. And to be fair, no trailers were available which would fit the twist. It's actually too narrow to fit onto some trailers. So we thought, let's utilize something else which we have in stock, which is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. It already featured in one of our videos and obviously it supports vehicle to load technology. The reason why we'd have to rely on a support vehicle, because even though there's plenty of charges along the route from London to Cambridge, the Twizy only is fitted with a three pin plug. So there is no way to kind of use type two or CCS rapid chargers at all. So we will have to use the vehicle to load adapter on the Ionic 5 and essentially the Ionic 5 will act as a massive portable power bank for the Twizy. So stick around to see how this goes. We haven't done too much planning. The benefit is that we will take the back road so we can pull over at any point when the Twizy needs a charge and we will see how long it will take to get to Cambridge because yeah, it's about 60 miles and as I said 30 miles on a charge from the Twizy. And we are ready to depart. I offloaded all the possible weight into the Ionic. The only thing in the cargo bay is the little booklet which comes with it and yeah, started 29 miles of range. You cannot see the dash and I cannot properly film in here because of the size constraints. So you will have to excuse my silly hat with the camera on top of it. And this way you will be able to see what I see. So sat nav is set up to the first stop. I will have to be super efficient today, but I'm not too worried about the first bit of London traffic. It will be very slow going anyways. But yeah, we will have to stick to sensible speeds when we are further out. We have actually taken these Twizies on a motorway, I think, once or twice. It was actually featured in one of our previous videos when we were getting them certified as they were imports into the UK. So make sure to click up there on the card if you want to see that. But it was on the M4, just the section which is just within London. So, you know, it was 50, 60 miles per hour speed limits, whereas it can do maximum of, I think, about 55 miles per hour, but I wouldn't be comfortable taking it on the M11, hence the reason why we are doing it this way. Joining the A2, they are doing some roadworks for the Silvertown Tunnel, so it's very congested these days. But while we are stuck in traffic, I can let you know my impressions of the driving dynamics. Let's make sure I don't get squished by this lorry. Manual adjustable mirrors. Obviously, it's quite loud in here because you've got no windows. We do have some available, which we are giving away with it. But from factory, they never came with windows. In fact, even the doors were optional. The steering, there is no power steering. It's very basic, no power brakes either. So it feels like a properly raw machine. And we often see people asking for EVs, which are fun rather than fast. And obviously in the petrol world, the Mazda MX-5 is the kind of benchmark for that. Whereas I think this is even one step rower than that. You can feel everything in the road. The suspension is quite hard. So even if I go over this tiny manhole cover, which looks completely flush from the outside, you can feel every little bump. The reason for the stiff suspension is to keep the vehicle quite upright and stable, even at said higher speeds, because this is much more capable, at least in our eyes, than something like the Ami which only has a top speed of about 28 miles per hour. So even if you use it within town, you will easily get to the limit. Whereas with this, even if you live in the country and you need to take it to the shops on some twisty roads, it will still manage just about fine. Going through the tunnel probably removes five years from my life. Very smelly. One more reason to go electric to reduce local pollution. But my hypermiling efforts on a good note have been working showing 35 miles of range now and obviously we have already covered some distance so that's fantastic this is a perfect day for it it's dry sunny outside we pumped up the tire pressures to the manufacturer recommended levels so hopefully everything works out well the first plant stop is harlow about 23 miles away one hour of driving so as long as we keep the average speed low i'm confident in the capabilities of the twizy
progress update. I am loving the Twizy. This route, which Google Maps has picked, has been fantastic so far. It's basically 40 miles per hour on these lovely back roads. I'm loving the way the Twizy handles. Obviously, it's a small vehicle, which means that we have so much room to kind of maneuver through the bends. But I've been trying to keep a steady pace and we have only eight miles left to Harlow but just over half a battery and the GOM is estimating 22 miles. I will take that, yes please. So, so far couldn't really ask for more. Excellent. Look, I can easily keep up with the other traffic. I am at Tesco's Harlow so now let's see where is Emma. The Twizy is officially faster than the Ionic 5, just beat Emma to Harlow. And the estimated range with about half of the battery remaining is 22 miles. Unfortunately, the Twizy doesn't give you an exact battery percentage, only when you start charging. So we will get the exact number in just a second. Here she is. So the vehicle to load adapter is nicely stowed away in the boot. Voila, that's what it looks like. On one end you have a normal type 2 plug and the other end opens up and reveals a three pin socket inside. So let's assemble the setup. So the Twizy plugs into the adapter first. We will make sure to get all of the cord. Now on the Ionic 5 you just open the charge port. That's all electronic. You plug the adapter in. It locks in just like a normal charging cable. It starts flashing and now there's a button at the end of the adapter which is on off. So you literally just press that in and it's like turning on a plug socket in your house. Now that's flashing green. It's very difficult to see in the direct sunlight. But if you look at the dashboard of the Ionic, you will see that it's now discharging at 1.9 kilowatts into the load, which is obviously the Twizy. And the Twizy is charging and we are starting from about 46%. As I mentioned, this is no rapid charging, but keep in mind, we don't need to stay all the way to full. In fact, it has been a couple of minutes and the Twizy is already at 50% in the battery. Realistically, these Twizzies, they gain about a percent for every two minutes of being plugged in. So if we stay here for no more than an hour, we should definitely have enough to get going on the road again. And we may need to do one last top-up charge before we get to the customer in Cambridge. In terms of battery capacities, if you're interested, obviously the Twizy is much smaller, about 6.1 kilowatt hours of battery capacity in total. Whereas the Ionic, obviously 77, out of that a little bit less is usable. So if the Ionic wasn't driven, it was purely used as kind of energy power bank, it could charge the Twizy about 10 times. While well, we have a few minutes here, I promised you a quick tour of this cargo version of the Twizy. So here we go. Obviously it still has the same doors which go up. Very cool, the same kind of hard plastic seat. The inside can be rinsed, well, at least the kind of footwell area. You do have to be quite careful with some of these switches when you are cleaning them because they are basically carried over from a normal Clio, so they are not kind of properly weather sealed. But this is the big difference in the back. You see, normally you would have a second kind of smaller tandem seat, whereas with the cargo version, Renault just installed a big box in the back. It has a proper hatch, which is lockable. And when you pop it open, you see that you have got a maximum load of 75 kilos. You see that this is a proper van. And this is the kind of storage area you get. So it's about the size of a pizza box, if you want a real world representation of the footprint. And yeah, it goes quite high. So even if you need to carry bigger items or you just want them to be locked away, this is your best option because there is this lockable glove box, but it's honestly quite rubbish. You can just kind of pry it open if you try it hard enough. So the boot is definitely the safer choice. And before anyone says how difficult electric cars are, look at it, plenty of chargers here, availability, but the problem lies in here, as I've mentioned, that this is the Type 2 plug, which is now the automotive standard, but obviously the Twizy is more of a heavy quadricycle. So it's intended to be recharged at home from a normal socket rather than a car charger. How convenient that we are at Tesco's, came completely unprepared, but now, yeah, about to get a tan. So already this feels like we are in the south of France. It's lovely. What's the percentage? The Twizy is on 
71%, that's enough to get to the next stop. The charging rate doesn't really taper off, still taking about two kilowatts. So to stop it, you press the button on the vehicle to load adapter that started flashing differently now and simply press the unlock button. You can hear the latch and you can, you can unplug everything just as usual. So we will close the charge port on the Ionic, put everything back into the Twizy and off we go. I was instructed to drive gently so we don't have to charge as often, but this is way too much fun. So I will have to mute Emma on the walkie talkie. second charging stop so the process as before we are kind of in the middle of nowhere the country roads up to get here were absolutely lovely i was having a little bit of fun in the twizy even though we are trying to be efficient and in the instrument cluster you can see that we arrived with 26 percent so we definitely needed a top up even if we tried to hyper mile wouldn't have made it. We've been enjoying the ventilated seats in the Ionic 5. Interestingly enough, you can have the ignition on while the vehicle to load functionality is active. So if you want to stay in the car and, for example, have the AC or the heating running, that is still possible. And yeah, we have been here for about an hour now, 55% on the Twizy. Let's try to stretch it to Cambridge. 24 miles in the battery, 20 miles to go. So we will have to be super duper efficient. Not to brag, but the plan worked perfectly. We are at Milton Park and Ride, which is on the northern side of Cambridge. Emma is just cleaning up the mess I made with all the suction mounts, so the Twizy can be handed over properly. The customer is less than a mile away from here. We just always want to protect their address because of GDPR reasons. And the Twizy was showing four miles of range remaining, just one battery bar. So that could not have gone better. Even on the country roads, it handled beautifully. It kept up with the traffic uh, and yeah I suppose that's the end of the video in terms of the electric car and charging stats I don't know many because the Twizy doesn't have a proper trip computer I will try to sum up the charging time and at least put that in but if there is one star of the show it has to be the Ionic. Emma was driving in full comfort with the air conditioning on, the ventilated seat enabled as well. It doesn't use that much power in the grand scheme of things. But even after the two top-ups of the Twizy, the Ionic is still at 74%. Very efficient at 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour and predicting 178 miles remaining. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. It's not something we do every day, but hey, we accomplished the mission of getting the Twizy delivered and with no carbon emissions, technically speaking, because we didn't need to hire a diesel vehicle to tow a trailer. If you want to learn more about the Ionic, we have made a dedicated video about it. So make sure to check it out here. And if you want to see even more EV content, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again. See you in the next one.